Youth Sunday. Hallelujah. And the youths are in charge. And I've been asked to give a word to the young people this morning. Hallelujah. That was not even my introduction song. But that's what the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. Hallelujah. And I will not keep silent. But I'm going to always worship the Lord. So anybody think they can stop my worship? You need to tell the devil you can't stop my worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you worship and adoration. Hallelujah. I think you all know me. I'm Sister Rene. Hallelujah. And I'm happy. The best thing in my life is to be saved. That was the best decision that I made when I was 13 years old. I surrendered my heart to the Lord. And I've watched him mold me, form me, fashion me, pop off some things, put on some things. Hallelujah. He's molding me daily. This morning, I want um, us to turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We have two scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, from verse 9 to 10, as well as Ecclesiastes chapters 12, from 1 to 14. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we read these portions of the scriptures. So we're going to read Ecclesiastes 11, 9 to 10 first, and then we go from 12, 1 to 14. Sorry, from 12, yeah, 1 to 14. When you find it, please stand. <clears throat> and even if you're still looking for it, please stand. Rejoice, O he young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. And in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thine heart. And put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Chapter 12. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not. Nor the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I have not no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the girders cease because they are few. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of the birds and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fear shall be in the way and the almond tree shall flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and the desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or even the silver cord be loosed, or the golden boughs be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the foundation, or the wheel broken at the center, sister, sister. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heeds and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upon what was upright, and even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. 
and furthermore by these my son be admonished of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man 14 and last for god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil here ended the reading of god's holy word we say thanks be to god you may be seated brethren i want to bless god for our pastor reverend mcdonald she's not with us today and we pray her strength and her guidance amen i want to bless the lord we have pastor shimona with us it's, it, it feels so nice rolling up pastor shimona no longer students minister hallelujah come on virgin give a round of a clap man praise god worship god and give god praise i mean as we we don't have minister Chrissy with us either today she's gone out as well um even though we don't um we heard the word that solomon said that studying wearies it wearies the flesh and i'm sure you're happy that studying is is finished for now but this for now because it actually doesn't stop amen hallelujah so we want to give god thanks as i was asked to bring the word I don't think a lot of you know this song but i'm gonna sing it and if you know it just sing it it says i may be young may never get old you know it may not have money silver or gold yes sister Chisholm, you know it the love of jesus will lead you safely home i can feel it down in my soul oh i may be young may never get old may not have money silver or gold the love of Jesus will lead me safely home. I can feel it down in my soul. He is my sunshine when the raindrops are falling. When I am coming, I hear him calling people will he will he use me and let him have control i can feel him down in my soul i may be young may never get old may not have money Silver or gold, the love of Jesus will lead me safely home. I can feel him down in my soul. Hallelujah. This is what the young people, you may be young and you think you're not going to get old. You may not have money, you're not have silver nor gold. But one thing you need to have is the love of Jesus. Because that is what's going to lead you safely home. And it's a good feeling when we feel him down in our souls. Say hallelujah. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. <clears throat> Glory be to God. The definition, I want to speak a little bit about definitions. So young, we all know what young means. But the, the dictionary describes it as having lived or exist for only a short time. An offspring before or seen after birth. So we know exactly what young's, a person with young means. Wise. I'm defining the topic. Young 
but wise. Wise, having, a sh having or showing experience, knowledge, a good judgment, having the power of discerning, I love this definition, having the power of discerning and judging properly as to what is true or right. The book of Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon. We all know King Solomon. Almost 3,000 years ago. So through the wisdom of God. So all that Solomon wrote was from God. Because he had requested, you know the story. He asked God. Uh, God asked him what he wanted. And he wanted wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. Therefore this message. His messages are relevant to our time. Solomon writing sermons is an analysis of life. If you read the Songs of Solomon, Proverbs, Songs of Solomon, Ecclesiastics, you realize he speaks about life and the things of life and what is, what is to be done and what should not be done. He has done it all. If you read about Solomon, King Solomon, you know he has done it all. Experience and any essay about life choose true meaning. Solomon allows us to know based on his experience that everything he has tried, tasted, tested has been meaningless. And he concludes, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. This advice comes from a wise, rich king who asks God for one of the best gifts, wisdom. And therefore, this morning, I want to encourage young people who are here. And for the adults who you're in your adulthood, but you're still no wise, ask God for wisdom. Being young and vibrant can sometimes fool us Allow us to make the, the biggest mistake. Thinking I will always be like this. Not thinking about the days ahead. Therefore making impulsive decisions. But Solomon warns us about the troubled days. Which is to come. And the years approached. When you will say I find no pleasure. In them, in them. Let me stop there a little bit. I remember a couple of years. And I got saved in a church in the country called Bath Mountain. Bath Mountain. So when you hear the word mountain, you know it's mountainous. And there's a hill. Some of you here know it. There's a hill that you have to climb to go up to church. And I remember as a young person, we used to run up the hill. We run it up. And we used to pass the elderly taking them time. And to us, we, 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 we are so foolish. So sometimes we probably laugh at them. And say, Lord, look how long you might come and I know you can't reach. A couple, it's a while well, I haven't been to Bath Mountain, but probably two months or three months ago. And I was going up the hill. And a journey was way ahead of me. Come on, mommy, come on. I mean, I take my time. I saw me tap on me, I breathe. And I take in my time. I'm saying that's to say this. As young people, sometimes you are fooled thinking you will always be young. And that your days are coming. That you will be doing the same thing that the old people do. But I want to guide you this morning from the book of Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. There's a psychologist called Eric Erickson. And for those of us who have done medicine or done psychology, or for whatever way you happen to learn about um, these psychologists, they offer a view of development of personality, identity through the lifespan, which shows a crisis and it shows a resolution. So in every stage of life, there's actually a crisis and there's a resolution. Example, in 
from birth to 18 months. There is something that they say, trust and mistrust. I'm going to use some of these children in here. It's Youth Sunday. Sister, pet your son from birth to 18 months. He has passed 18 months. He has passed it. So you have some children from birth to 18 months. And what they're saying is that they need to have trust, which is the resolution, and the crisis is mistrust. So it depends on as a parent how you treat that child. It's going to develop either a trusting relationship or the child is going to mistrust you. It moves on to 18 months to three years. We want to use sister pet son now. Autonomy and doubt. So this child wants to be autonomous. He wants to do his own thing. And therefore, he will say everything. No, you want to do the same. No. Or you used to take up the thing, but he won't do it himself and he go take it up. You know the danger of him taking it up. But this child has reached a stage where the child is going to either develop autonomy, meaning this child does things for him or herself, or this child is going to be doubtful because everything you say, Lefty, don't touch it, or the child gets a slap. So the child develops a doubtful attitude. And therefore, that's the stage of life. There's one from three to five. Initiative and guilt. So when they want to do something and you stop them, it, 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 both stages almost coincide. You stop them from doing things. They develop a stage of guilt. So they don't want to do th things. They don't want to do anything because you, you keep on telling them, left it or don't touch it or you punish them for certain things. But sometimes all we have to do sometimes is talk to them. We are learning, brethren. Right? So that's the stage of life. There's another stage from 5 to 12. Industry versus inferiority. And so you'll have your 5 to 12 year old want to be industrious. Or you're going to keep on cowing them down and they don't have confidence in themselves. 12 to 20. Now this is the stage I want to stay on a little bit. It's described as the period of storm. And why it is described as the period of storm is because in this stage, I'm talking about 12 to 20. Sexuality plays, come into play. Social emotion come into play. Life come into play. So you are thinking about when your friend whisper to you and say, Sex. When your friend, when your mother said to you, say, listen to me, I feel me host and you need to come in certain time. And you think that you have reached a certain age that they don't need to speak with you. I'm talking about a 20-year-old, a 19, an 18-year-old. So in this stage of life, it brings a lot of confusion. Because it's like you're coming from a child to an adult. And therefore you're at a stage where a lot of things are coming to play. You are developing because 12-year-old, 13-year-old, 14-year-old, you start to develop. Even physically, you are developing. And therefore, we'll have our young people sometime answer back. Talk to you like, say, are them wrong things? Because, guess what? Parents, I hear you shouting, but I want you to be understanding too. Because sometimes we want to treat them as if they're children. Amen. But they're not remembering that they are now becoming an adult. So therefore you have a problem with self-identity. It's called self-identity or confusion. That is why some of our children know they're introducing all sorts of something in school. Hallelujah to them. Because they know that they're at a stage where they're confused. Or they don't know themselves. So therefore they want to introduce all sorts of something in the school to our teenagers. But I'm saying to you that sometimes you have to give them a chance and try to understand them. Try to speak with them. I know what is happening. It's you Sunday. The young people are clapping. 
sometimes you have to try and understand you know what it was like when you were a teenager not because you were born in an area where your parents tell you children are seen and not heard Brethren, it should not be the parents that met with me this morning. But remember that I'm a parent too. I'm going to tell you that sometimes you have to put your foot down. You have to say, no, this is my home. But there's another time that you need to listen to your child. When your child speaks, to find out what is happening. Because sometimes they want to speak, they're feeling confused. They don't know what to do. They don't know what step to take. But because mommy put a barrier and daddy put a barrier between us, we are not size. So therefore you should not speak to me. You should not ask me. Then who are they going to ask? They're going to find the wrong person to give them the wrong advice. Young people, I'm not saying to you that you should not respect and honor your parents. That's what the Bible says. So you should be careful of how you say what you say to your parents. But I'm also saying, parents, listen to your children as well. Read with them. How will they know if you don't tell them? There's a stage of life, 20 to 30. Intimacy versus isolation. So it's a time when we think we should get married. We should start having our families. We should settle down and have a good job. And all of these things. And therefore, it's not, if it's not going in our way, we start worry about it. God, when you walk up, come, God. Father, when am I going to get a job? When am I going to get married? When am I going to have a family? And we worry about these things. And if only we would depend on God. I'm talking about young and wise. But though the years are coming, where if the first years are not put in place, young people, I'm talking to you. If the first years are not put in place, and later will be affected. Example 30 to 65. Generative versus stagnation. Now you reach a point where now you start to worry. And you say, no, so I go down the line. Me I get old, me start to feel pain in my knee. Me start to feel the pain Then when mommy used to ball about. Thank you, sis. Things start to happen to me and me not, not, not go on for me. What they happen? And after that is from 65 to date. Integrity versus despair. This is why sometimes you will have some persons when they reach these stages of life, they are extremely miserable because of some things that they have not done. I'm telling you. But can I say to you, when you have God in the vessel, you can smile at the storms and the accomplishments that you have not done. What I'm saying to you this morning, young people, is to get it right. And as Solomon said, anything that you do, Solomon has done it all. He has been concubines. He has been wife, wives. He has been parties. He has been this. He was a king. And therefore he lived like a king. I'm telling you. But at the end of it, King Solomon sit down and he say, my God, it's meaningless. I want to encourage you young people. Now make nobody force you to do what you're not to do. As a young person growing up in the church and I started serving God at age 13, I could do like any other young person. But God wants us to live a life. You can live the life. Now let nobody fool you so you can't keep out. And tell you about how you go back up in your back. No, 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 so. Take it from a nurse. That's a life from the pit of hell. Love God and serve God. And serve God good. It can be done. Because I have done it. And I'm still doing it. Hallelujah. I see, I realize that our young people are challenged because every day it's all about sex. It's all about drugs and scamming. Nothing that is good. They are seeing these things every day and as if it is normal. And no 
come. Enjoy life now. You're young. Run, run, walk. Enjoy yourself. Nothing is wrong with it. If you want to go out and watch a movie, I'm talking about to the bigger young people now. If you want to go out and watch a movie, go watch a movie. Enjoy yourself. But don't do anything physically, mentally, or spiritually that will prevent you from enjoying life when you are older. The thing about it is that some of us elderly people are middle age. We're not telling the young people them sometimes. We're afraid to tell them where we're coming from. What you have done and what you do so wrong. And that's what I'm keeping you from. Life when you are old. Life without God can produce a bitter, lonely, and hopeless old age. I'm going to repeat it. Life without God can produce a bitter, lonely, and hopeless old age. You think sometimes we don't feel bitterness? You think sometimes we don't feel lonely? You think sometimes there isn't hopelessness? But can I say to you when you have God, these things, they may happen for a while, but you put everything in God's hands. Hallelujah. A life centered around God is fulfilling. Take it from me. A life centered around God is fulfilling. It doesn't matter what may happen. It's a fulfilling life. Don't let the devil fool you. And say, no, follow the Christian people, them up there. Look how they stay. Look how they turn. They're not going away. And then pick you up out a road and show you it. But can I say to you, when you go to it, the end of it is destruction. It will make the days of troubles, disability, sickness, satisfying because of the hope of eternal life. I have seen some persons in hospital, brethren, sick. But you know what's the difference between the saved and the unsaved? Take it from me. The sick save. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How you doing, nurse? Me no fear so well, but give God thanks. Hallelujah. They give you hope even though they're ill. The unsaved. You. So long word. Brethren. It may sound funny, but I'm telling you, the last days of your life, and all you can do is disrespect and do all sorts of negativity. But there's a difference with the patient that has God. Because there is a hope. There is a hope that this is not the end of it. So what I'm saying to you young people, make your decisions carefully. And in making those decisions, ensure that God is the center of your decisions. Because when it reaches to the point that we're going down the hill where we can't walk so good, when the body, because it's coming, you know, it's unless, unless you're dead along the line. But it is coming, brethren. And that is why when people sick, you don't laugh. And you don't mock. And you don't jeer. They can't to the me. Tomorrow for you. You don't laugh at people's sicknesses. Nobody is immune to sickness. We have a healer, yes. But we are human and we are so frail. This flesh is corruption. So what I'm saying to you, young people, just remember, take care of your own people then. Because guess what your days are coming. I remember the other day I was in at the ATM machine. And I overheard a young lady say, somebody said, I allow this elderly lady to go because you know, she's elderly and she come in the long line. 
So she gave her the opportunity to go ahead. And I heard a young lady say, This can't happen to My remark was, This is not foreign. We become so foreignized, every foolishness we pick up. We take care of our young people and we take care of our elders. That's what I know. We take care of the people that are pregnant who turn our future. You can't be the lion and see an old person. Can't have this stand up and I'm going to say about sorry. That I disagree with because, listen, let me tell you something. That's our problem. We don't know our values and our standards. So therefore, we copy other people's value and copy other people's standards. We take care of our elders. Young people, take care of your elders. Because sometimes you take care of them and know they are angels. You are harbor. And therefore, a blessing is coming your way. Hallelujah. And to know that along the line, you will be in that position. As God steer your life. And can I say this to you? Some people are live long. You know why? Because some things that they have done in the past, they have to go through it. I'm telling you. Some decisions that they have made in the past. So we have to be careful of the decisions that we make, young people. It's your son that I'm talking to you. The decisions that you make will affect your future. Being young is exciting, but the excitement of youth can become a barrier to closeness with God. Because you think you have the energy, and probably church can manage for your energy. You have too much energy. So you say, you know what? Me need to go to the party. Go to the party because guess what? Me have to get rid of them energy. Yeah. But can I say to you, nothing is wrong with young people enjoying themselves. Nothing is wrong with it. But in enjoying yourself, ensure that God is with you. And therefore, you're making the right decisions. Ask God to help you to make the right decisions. Make your strength available to God when it is still yours. First John 2 14 says, Young men, and when it speaks men, know it talks about everybody man, woman, boy, girl, everybody. I, 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 I you are all. Young men, I call upon you because you are strong. Amen. Youth is the best time to serve the Lord. Amen. Brethren, young people, I share this with you. I'm happy the day when I surrendered my heart to the Lord. I'm happy the day when I gave him everything. I mean, I tell us, when I surrendered my heart to the Lord, I said, Lord, Show me your way. Help me. Teach me how to know you. You see how when God asked Solomon, say, what is it that you wanted? And Solomon said, wisdom. All of us have a time when we speak with God. And we tell God, what is it? When you just see it, you say, God. I said, Lord, help me to know you. And to serve you. And I remember my first encounter, apart from church, I was at school because I was 13 years old. I was going to from school. I mean, can we live a country you have to take early bus? You can't wait. It's not like nowhere. Some children they stand up on the road. I make all the taxi cars because they have them boom that to come. Any any the one vehicle and the one vehicle. Some may have to catch the vehicle there. And I remember I was in, in class the morning. Nobody no come to school yet. And I was sitting in the class. And I started reading the Psalms. And I just started to worship God. Me and God alone. I started to worship God. And I could feel his presence coming in the classroom. That's why I say, young people, you can serve God. I I ask you. It, it, it's all about your determination to serve him 
and to love him. You can have a relationship. Let no man despise your youth. Let no adult despise your youthfulness. And think say that you can't have a relationship with God. You can have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Stripped of God's spirit, our bodies return to dust. Stripped of God's purpose, our work is in vain. Stripped of God's love, our service is futile. Knowing this motivates the wise person to seek God first. And all other things shall be added. The problem that we have sometimes as young persons, we don't have the patience. We think it's taking too long. But can I say to you, when God do it is well done. He has a time and a season for everything under the sun. He has a time and a season for everything. Don't let nobody tell you, say, as a young person, because sometimes we, we put God in this. We take God out of this. We, put it, we, we choose what we want to put God in. Us. But God wants us to put him in everything that we do. I'm not saying long, brethren, brethren. I say to the young people, and I quote 1 Timothy 4, 12 to 13, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in words, in conversation, in love, which is charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Six things were listed. Can I say to you, and I want to take it down, I'm so close. I want to take it down a little bit. Careful of your conversations, young people. I remember days when I, as a young person, sometimes, some things, you know, we we'll, we'll laugh at. We see that's funny. Or it, it, I mean, it just, we, we just laugh because to us it's funny. Sometimes your friend, they would talk certain things because I had friends who were there, they were having their little boyfriends. And they will say things. And we would, I would want to get involved. Your conversations, what they speak, the Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you, say, hey, hey, come on, that. Hello, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. So whether you agree, yes or no, I know. Because if I'm having a conversation that the Holy Spirit don't agree with, me here and say, eh, eh. get out of it. We hear when he speaks in words. What are the words that you speak? What are the words that you utter? The Bible is saying to us as young people, you must be careful of the words that come out of your mouth. In love. So you must ask God if you know. So you can't love. Ask God to help you if you love. Because I will say to you, brethren, it's the love of the Lord that helps us to love. Our love is so frail and dirty. It comes with, 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 with our requirements. But God love don't have no requirements. Because we were so, what should I say, full of iniquity and sin. Wretched and wicked. But yet he sent his only son that we can have this opportunity. So we should ask God to show us the love. In spirit. If nowadays we see young people stop carrying for Holy Ghost. I'm going there. Because let me tell you something. When I come in church. Let, 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 I, 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 I want to put it in a right way. Holy Ghost was the thing, or is the thing. You need the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, brethren, I'm glad the day when he poured out his spirit in me. The karmic could not make it. You hear what I say? I could not make it. And in times like these, young people, you need the spirit of God. 
Because when we feel like we're going to get dirty and get messy, Holy Spirit said, no, no. So I'm saying that the Bible is saying, in spirit, you need the Holy Spirit. In faith, it means believing. Knowing that God is able to do it. Knowing that God is able to take you through. Believe his word. And I want to say the last one is purity. Because right here now we come like I say, Christians not to stay a virgin until they're married. I'm going there. You know why I'm going there? I got saved when I was 13. And this is my business. And I'm sharing it with you. And I got married as a virgin. Amen. And I am proud of it. It doesn't matter what happened after. I am proud that I made that decision. And it was true God. So young people, anybody where I tell you, say, you can't make it. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. You can stand. You can stand. And let me tell you, say, you're pretty and you're beautiful and you look good. And therefore, you're going to have some of them out there will come to you and tell you about your prettiness and your beautifulness. But let them know you know that you're beautiful. You know that you're pretty. But you have a bigger calling. And therefore, you're waiting on the Lord. And not to say you're not going to have your, your, you're not going to be there. No, no. Look to you. Know, yeah, look. And yeah, pray. You understand what I'm saying? But have your principles. And stand on them. And don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. And why I say what I say before, both eye in the back. And nothing that me hear. So therefore, but, but can I say, when you keep up oil, what does it do? It actually lubricates. So I know something bad will happen to you. Nothing bad now happen to you. There's a time for everything. My mother used to tell me, sex now run away. You know how much years me the parlan? You know how much years me the parlan? And I know in a run that I'm not a fact if for plenty of snow. So young people, I'm encouraging you. We're having a one-to-one -one under God. Keep yourself, keep your sanity. I love God to lead you and to direct you because you can make it all when your friend are doing it. Because you see the funny thing about it? You see when you get pregnant. All who did I tell you about John and Joe and Tom and Harry? You know, see them again. Are you one and left in a hit? If you should catch an STD, nobody ever did it with you. You and your parents. And sometimes parents don't want you neither. So what I'm saying, young people, let nobody mash up your life. Because some people, can I be honest with you, brethren? You know, for so some people, see people good, good pick me. I won't pile them. And they don't come out to them good. They look too pretty. And they look too nice. And, and they're too intelligent. So therefore, they come home whisper like an devil in your ears. I'm being honest with you, brethren. You have some people who are evil. Us. You pick me not to come to nothing. They not to look good. But I'm saying to you, young people, with God, all things are possible. Allow God to lead you because it can be done. When me talk, me not talk by nobody at the experience. I don't talk about what we hear in a church. I don't talk about me. It can be done. You know, mean say sometimes you're not going to make a mistake. You know, you your fault sometimes. And you feel, but you're going to get up back. And you're going to say, God, forgive me and you move on. Because we're not perfect. And if we were perfect, we would all gone to heaven. We're not perfect. But it's a day-to-day, step-by-step process. 
Sometimes you will feel like I say, you want to tell back mommy something. But allow God to lead you and to direct you. And even if you make the mistake, I'm going to tell mommy something. When you sit down, the Holy Spirit will tell you, say, Rene, you should not do it. And you're going to go back and you're going to say, Mommy, Daddy, I'm sorry. Young people, the best life you can ever live is a life in Christ. Amen. Keeping yourself, living pure and holy is still a thing. It still can be done. No outer style. It can be done. But you have to ask God to lead you by committing yourself to him and asking him for wisdom. I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging you, young people. I'm encouraging you that it can be done. I was young like you. I have been in your shoes, basically. Thank you, Pastor Scott. And parents, I do think you should speak with your children. Talk to them. Because you know the feeling, how the feeling was, you know, when you have got through these stages and you never have nobody to talk to. And our friend, you go tell any friend, give your advice. And the advice put you in a trouble. Open your doors, the parents, for your children. Not every time, shun them and tell them, say, me have my time and me just can't bother. Me know the feeling. Because you have everything to do. So I have my time with the journey. I said, I can't, me can't talk. Me can't. I'm tired. But there are times when you need to just listen. Or even if when the person he was the child was talking and you didn't get to talk about it then. On another occasion, you say, All right, well, you didn't tell me say again. You understand when you feel because we all have our issues. As adults, we have an issue, we have the things we are dealing with. You have your children to be dealing with work, home, everything. And sometimes you become frustrated. It's human. But have a time for your child. Speak to your child. Because if the child don't have no, if the child don't have no advice from you, the child will go look advice somewhere else. And you're not going to like that advisor. But young people, all I'm encouraging you to do, seek God. No make your friend where you have out the, 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 the guy where they tell you about, yo, my youth are scamming and going now, you know. And a scam and, and a this and a that and nowadays these young boys it chop up. Them a chop line. But can you imagine? It, it is so, it is so, it is so when you listen to it, they're chopping lines, so they're cutting off all communication. Can I say to you, young people, young women, young men, allow God to lead you. Because this is not where your life ends. There's going to be a future. See yourself in the future. This is how you want to be when you have sick. Never chop too light. I can assure you that's not what you want. I see you as something, young people. That's not what you want when you have stick and a, and a walk. You have a chop two line. So you have to think about the future. Think about your education. And all the way I got on doctor. And all the way I got on nurse. And all the way I got on pilot. And all the way I got... But everybody has a purpose. Find your purpose. And the thing about it, you know, brethren... These are the fancy things that we look on. But no, 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 nowadays on the side go. Do you know that you have YouTubers? Ajani, tell me about it. People who, who make games and they're making millions. You have, you, you have, no, you have technology. Technology has increased the workforce. You understand it having good and it bad. But there's some good there where it has increased workforce. So what I'm saying, young people, there are other things that you can do. There's more to life. Be the difference. I heard a saying, a statement, dare to be different. Dare to be different. You will not have a lot of friends, but at the end of it, it will pay. 
All right? God bless you. God keep you. I'm going to invite every young person to the altar. Minister Clark, I'm going to... Pastor Reverend Clark, I'm going to invite you to pray for them for me, please. Every young person, every young person, from birth to 20, 30, yes, yeah. come, every young person. From birth to 35. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means for, for um, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This year, the team was going back to Bavarians. Yes. It's not really not happening to you. Children, they can tell you what chance they can. Yes. They can tell you everything. Who are they? Please, let me come see if you're going to tell you. For example, that when you teach you and you're going to tell you, you don't need to be a gender. 